Hey everybody, this is Rhett. In this video, I'd like to show you how to use GeoGebra to conduct a hypothesis test for the mean mu. Let's look at a simple one-tailed hypothesis test. In this case, we're testing whether the mean is greater than 100. We'll assume that we know the population standard deviation, and that's 25, and that our sample size is 36. Because we know sigma and our sample size is at least 30, we're fine using a z-test for the mean. We're going to use p-value to make our decision, and in this example, we'll use a significance level of 5%. So let's say that we've collected some data, and our sample mean is 107. So before we go to GeoGebra, let's discuss the basic idea for this test. We have some bell-shaped distribution. Um, in this case, we're assuming that it is centered at 100. We have a standard deviation in the population of uh, 25, and we're taking samples, or a sample, of 36. So remember that we need to use the standard error, since this is a sampling distribution. So that will be a sigma, and we'll put a little subscript here of x bar to remind us that this is the sampling standard deviation. And that will be equal to our population standard deviation of 25 divided by the square root of our sample size. So in this case, that'll be 6. You can use your calculator, and we'll get an approximation that this is about 4.17. Um, our sample mean is 107. So that's somewhere over here in the right-hand tail. We'll put x bar equals 107. So if we're using the p-value method, we're actually looking for the area that's in this right-hand tail that's to the right of 107. And we want to check and see if that is indeed less than our significance level. And here we are at GeoGebra using the probability calculator. The default is a standard normal distribution, uh, so the center is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. Let's change the center to 100 and our standard deviation to, let's see, that was 25 divided by the square root of 36, which is 6. We're looking for the p-value associated with 107. So I'm going to change the upper limit here to 107. And I would like to put negative infinity for my lower limit. I don't think that's an option. So instead, I'm going to choose an arbitrary uh, large negative number. Uh, how about negative 1,000? And you'll see that the probability is 0.9535. Now notice that the shaded region in our curve is the area that's to the left of 107. And that would be great if we were conducting a left-tailed test, but this is a right-tailed test, and we actually want the area that's to the right of 107. So we have two options. We can either subtract 0.9535 from 1, and that will give us the p-value. But let me show you um, another option we can instead change the lower limit to 107 and then adjust the upper limit to an arbitrary large number. Uh, in this case, let's just use positive 1,000. Notice now that the shaded region is now to the right of 107 and our probability is 0 0.0465. Since the p-value is less than 5%, we can reject the null hypothesis. If this were a two-tailed test, we would have to double that probability. So the p-value would be a little more than 9%, 0 0.09. If our significance level was still 5%, for a two-tailed test, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. I hope that that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay real and be rational.